Hello everyone! My name is Jennifer Stay and this is Coloring Bliss and we are here unboxing the ultimate Sharpie collection. And it's not just me calling it that. That it was what Sharpie calls it. This is the ultimate Sharpie collection. And we're having so much fun unboxing it. We uh, opened it all up and started looking at all the fun markers over on the first hour of this live event, which was on Facebook. Mm. So make sure you follow the link in the video description if you'd like to see the first hour of this live event. Now we're here with you on YouTube for the second hour. We're going to keep swatching, keep talking about Sharpie. There's so much to talk about with Sharpie. I love Sharpie markers. They are one of my very favorite art supplies. They're the very first alcohol marker I ever used. I love alcohol markers. I've got Copics, I've got Blix, I've got Prismacolors. I love them. They're so much fun to use. But I have a soft spot in my heart for Sharpies because I've had them since I was young. They're so much fun to use. They're inexpensive and I don't know they're just charming and fun to you so when I saw this ultimate collection I was like you know what this might be a lot of fun to use on my channel and it will give us a chance to look at all the different colors try a few of the markers that I don't have and we can talk about them together so I went on to Sharpie's website printed off some really interesting facts about Sharpie and we're just having a good time swatching I also have a fun free gift for you to download so that you can have some fun swatching Sharpies at home and that is this swatch chart right here. Now it corresponds to the ultimate Sharpie collection box, but it will help you with your Sharpie collection at home. You can swatch onto it and see what colors you have, what colors you need to collect. A lot of the Sharpies are available open stock so you can purchase them. And maybe you have some colors that aren't included in the ultimate collection because I know for a fact that there are some that are available currently that aren't in the Sharpie ultimate collection. Although Sharpie's website says everything they have available color wise is in this box, but that's not true. I'm going to prove them wrong right away here. You're going to see, but there's also older collections, some limited edition collections that were around a long time ago that aren't available now and maybe you have some of these limited edition colors in your stash so it's kind of fun that you can look through your old sharpies and see what you have swatch them out and enjoy your sharpies kind of revisit them and re-enjoy them i also have a really fun playlist here on youtube full of coloring tips and tricks to help you get the most out of coloring with your sharpies so what is in the ultimate collection what's part of all of this it's really cool it comes with um, all different kinds of markers we get some chisel tip markers that's these big boys back here we get fine points ultra fine points we get neons metallics and we get the twin tips which are the ones I just finished swatching let me show you the twin tips that's these ones right here they have a fine point on one end this end that's what the fine point looks like we're all pretty familiar with that and on this end it has the ultra fine point so that's pretty cool and really handy for colorists because um, as a colorist I these are my favorite the full the fine point and the ultra fine point sometimes I want the fine point for bigger areas and then the ultra fine point for those teeny tiny little details so this one right here is really clever to me for colorists and I wish they had them in all the colors but I know that the um, twin tips only come in I have notes the twin tips come um in only 20 colors and there are 49 unique and vibrant colors according to sharpie markers 
um, frequently asked questions section on their website. So I have a link to Sharpie, um, their website in the description. I also have a link to a blog and it looks like this. Her blog is called Too Old to Color and she has a really good list of some of the old collectors um, sets that I don't have. Like, let me read a few of them. I have some of them, like the 80s glam set I think I have, but I don't have like the Caribbean colors or the wildflowers colors. So those are some of the sets that you might have in your older collection. So go follow the link to this blog and you can read about what she has learned about the colors that Sharpie um, has available. So that's kind of cool that we can look into our Sharpies. Now the frustrating part about Sharpie is they don't put the color names on their markers. And that's been part of the puzzle for me with this set, the Ultimate Collection, is I'm trying to figure out when it says on the end here that you should have a racy red, a red, an optic orange, and an orange. I have to figure out which one is racy red and which one's red and which one's leg warmer orange and which one's orange. And then what I'm doing is I'm using an acrylic paint pen to write the names onto the body of the marker. So from here on out, I will know that this twin tip marker right here is magenta. So that's my plan. We're going to keep moving forward with swatching. We're going to keep sharing some tips and ideas about um, Sharpie. I've written down some really cool facts that I learned about Sharpie markers. We've already talked about like the year that the Sharpie marker was introduced. What We're going to talk about some other things like um, what's inside of this black marker here and is it different than what's inside this magenta marker? Hmm. Did you know that it is, Steve? We're going to talk about that. So it should be a really fun hour. I'm glad you're here. If you like this kind of content, make sure you hit a little thumbs up and you subscribe to my channel because I have lots more videos like this coming your way. So let's get going here. And the next thing I want to swatch I love metallic shiny things. So that's the next thing we're going to talk about. And this is where there's controversy. Ooh, <laughs> controversy in the ultimate Sharpie collection. <laughs> so here we have the metallic markers that were included in the ultimate Sharpie collection. And now, like I said, when you go and you read on the um, frequently asked questions um, page on Sharpie, they tell you um, that you ask, how do I get all your colors? They tell you the best way to get all the colors is to come and buy the Ultimate Collection because it has all the colors available currently in Sharpie. And that's not true. <laughs> because I know for a fact that there are other metallics available. Let me get them right here. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> I wish I had like a drama button. I could push a, a drama button. Is it because they're like in some special pack or something? Like it's a limited edition kind of thing? Let me show you. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I, I did something. Steve was trying to do something here. And it all ready for you. He had it all ready and I messed it up. Okay, so these are the ones that came in the, I need to clean up. I need to clean up. Let's clean up the twin tips here. Get them over here. Uh, Cause we're here to talk about these beauties. Now these are the only ones that have names on them, which I really appreciate. So they do say bronze, gold, but they gave me four silvers two of each of the others, two bronzes and two golds. Instead, they could have given me <laughs> some of the new colors. We've got three new colors right here. We have a metallic emerald, a metallic ruby, and a metallic sapphire. Now, I went on to um, Sharpie's website because I was like, Steve was just saying, and I thought the same thing, maybe 
they're discontinued already. Maybe they're not available and I'm making a big fuss over nothing. So I went and checked and you can do their little drop down on their website to see what colors they have available. And I did the little drop down on the metallics and metallics. What is available? Bronze, silver, gold, sapphire, ruby, and emeralds. <laughs> da -da -da -da. So that's your drama for the. This is the kind of drama we have on this channel. <laughs> we have art drama on this channel. <laughs> so yes, they are available. I. It's on their website. These three colors are available, and they're not. Well, someone mentioned their in. paint markers. Well, all of them are. All the metallic markers are um, a paint. They are not a alcohol type wow. marker. Um, so you're going to see that as we go. They come out like a nice, juicy, yummy, beautiful paint. And that's how they get their opacity. And that brings us to another question. Oh, we just have so many fun Sharpie facts and tidbits to give you. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> so as I swatch these, we're going to talk a little bit about why these are different than all the others. Um, and when we were swatching the neons, I even ran across this. You can see how streaky neon green is. Let me bring it up. Obviously, this is not an alcohol marker. And as I was laying it down, it felt different. And when you smell it, it smells different. I'm going to let our resident smeller <laughs> smell it. And you can, he will Thanks. smell right away that that does not smell like a standard Sharpie. Mm. Here's a standard I Sharpie. I kind of like the smell of it. Of that one. Mm -hmm. It's kind of sweet. That's a... That smells like yeah. a Sharpie. Mm. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, you're right. It smells kind of sweet. That's weird. Yeah. Now smell one of the uh, metallics. Okay. smells like paint it's paint yeah yeah it's yeah. paint so that's how they get the um opacity uh alcohol markers are very translucent mm -hmm. which we love as artists because you can build up layers you can <laughs> deepen up the colors um we love that property of our alcohol markers but in order to get um a more opaque type property in these markers they have to uh, make it more of a painty type marker so i was always um, you guys know i'm always on the hunt for a really good white opaque type product i'm always looking for a white gel pen a new one because i'm tired of all the old ones they all fail me right now i'm all about the um uniposca white that's my favorite one right now um for my white <clears throat> so why can't they make a white sharpie now they make a white paint sharpie because it's the same deal but why can't they make a white sharpie so i'm gonna have steve read about that as soon as he um, reads a comment for me here beverly just donated she says oh. thank you for everything you do for us jennifer and steve thank you so much beverly you're so sweet <laughs> Okay. Kim mentioned they will pill your paper. Yes, because they're wetter. They mm -hmm. have wet the wet. They have water in them, so they have different properties. They dry differently. I wonder how they work just... on the watercolor paper. Yeah, mm. they're going to be different. And Matthew Bot says also they block other Sharpies. Wow. Like you were saying that. That's awesome. And Matthew's here. I'm so glad Matthew's here. <laughs> Matthew, am I allowed to say who Matthew is? Uh, yes. Okay. Steve, everybody knows Matthew. He's been on our channel before. He's Steve's nephew and he loves Sharpies. And so I'm so glad he's here tonight because he has a lot of experience doing art with Sharpies. So I'm yeah. glad he's here tonight. Now, okay. a couple things were mentioned. Uh, Blue Petal Media says the Ultimate Collection 72 is from 2016. The 115 Ultimate Collection came out in 2017. Ah. And then Mystic Sparkle Wings uh, is wondering if Ruby, Emerald, and Sapphire aren't in the collection because they've only come out in the last year or so. Yeah, and we were talking about that over on Facebook, how... Um, well, okay, so the history of Sharpie is interesting because the original black... This boy right here, the black 
fine point came back out way back in 1964. And then it was not until 1979 that they came out with the ultra fine points. This bad boy right here. So it was 15 years between these two different bodies. But we were joking on Facebook that it feels like now there's new Sharpie markers coming out multiple times a year. Did I say that right? Yeah, I think so. So it feels like it's coming out like all the time we get new Sharpies. I'm not complaining. I love all the new Sharpies. But I think that's what's happening. And I think everybody's bringing up the point that we've got so many new markers coming out. It's very confusing. And this brings me again to my pet peeve. If Sharpie would just put names on these markers, it would really help those of us who adore their product and want to collect and love and display and take care of their beautiful products. Especially where Blick does that. So. Yeah, Blick can do it. So, not Blick, Bic. Oh, not Blick, yeah, you're right. Bic. Bic does it. They do it with the slightest of ease. Look, their names are on all their products, the color. Playful purple. So if Bic figured it out, why can't Sharpie start doing it? Because we love their products and we would collect them. And I mean, all they'd have to do is say, with names now, and re-release them and we'd all go out and rebuy them, right? <laughs> so I'm just saying, Sharpie, I'd rebuy all your products if you put names on them. So yeah, did you hear me, Sharpie? <laughs> I'm not the only one that would rebuy all your products. Okay, so um, back to why um, they can't have white. Steve, will you read? Notes, lots of notes. And it's so interesting. I love this kind of stuff. Why, uh, why isn't the Sharpie marker available in white? We're talking about a white alcohol marker. Right there. Steve's going to read it while I start swatching the first three of the metallic markers. We're not going to swatch these yet. We're going to swatch the first three, which are silver, gold, and bronze. And we're going to all go, oh, as we look at the beautiful metallics. Okay, okay Steve, I'm ready to hear why we don't have a white. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it's a big buildup. Yes. A really big buildup. Well, I have to have some deep voice. Use your something. use your Bob Ross voice. Yes. <laughs> so a white marker. That's beautiful. <laughs> requires a pigmented rather than a dye base ink to achieve the required opacity. With the ink technology available, we've been able we've been unable to manufacture a marker or pen that will uniformly lay down white ink. In the future, however, as new ink technology develops, it is quite possible we will be able to make a pigmented white ink marker. Until then, we suggest trying Newell Brand's white Sharpie paint or poster paint marker. It is a valve action marker which requires a pumping action. Okay. Thank you, Steve. No, you're welcome. That was brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so that's the answer as to why we don't have a white alcohol marker by Sharpie. So it has to do with pigments and dyes, <clears throat> translucency, all those good things that we all understand. No alcohol markers come in white. Can you think of any? I can't think of any. We have the colorless blenders, we have really light grays, but we don't have any whites. Right. Okay, next one we're going to swatch is the gold. And I am not a fan of this gold. You guys know I prefer a nice yellowy gold. This is more of a greeny gold, if I remember right. We're going to find out. See if I remember right. Okay. And look how kind of dry these are. Hmm. Is that why they gave me three? Come on, get going. Well, that's a terrible sound. It's all right. It's all right. Let's see if the other one is better. A little bit better, but I'm not too impressed, Sharpie. I may have to... 
contact them and see if they'll send me some fresh ones. Might be that they've been sitting in this box for a while. Okay, now we have not one, not two, not three, but four silvers. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> okay, metallic silver. Now, I am a huge fan of their silver markers, so yes, I am joking about being given four silvers, but I am quite pleased about it because it is one of the most beautiful silvers I've ever used, is their metallic silver, so I'm all right with it. I'm quite pleased about it, so... <laughs> Okay. Well, and if they did release this in 2017, that makes sense. Yep. And look at that pretty silver. It lays down the best. Um, the metallic bronze and gold are failing already, and that silver is... Look at that. That's just a beautiful silver. So I'm really happy with that. I'm glad that the four silvers are there. That's I'm really pleased with that. I'm sad that these two are um, kind of... Um, dry I will contact Sharpie and I will let you guys know one of the good judges of a good company is when you contact them about something like this how well do they respond so I will let you guys know how well do they respond <clears throat> when I call and contact them about this now Amy said just store them tip down for a while and they'll juice back up okay and we'll notice do it that. does say store tip down they actually say it on there look at that Oh, so maybe they do they not Oops, say that? Sorry, on nope, they all do. Nice. Um, so that's probably why. Just the paint markers do, though. In general, just so you know, um, I tend to store my sharpies all tip down. Keeps all the ink right at the the felt tip part, so that's good and juicy and ready to go. Um, right now, in the back. I have my Sharpies stored tip up because it looks prettier. It would look kind of stupid, all the gray tips up. But um, in general, I keep all my single-ended markers tipped down like this. Whether it's water-based or alcohol-based, that's how I store all my markers is tipped down. Okay, so we will do that. I will store these all tip down and hopefully they will wake up. I'll let you know. Yeah, you need a clear case so you know what color you're dealing with. Yeah. That's the problem, huh? Yeah, so I'll I'll do some research and see if I can figure out. See how pretty it looks back there with all the tips up? It's just really a beautiful display that way. And if I flip them all around, it's just boring. So for YouTube, for you, I have them all tip up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got all the silvers swatch now these have all been tip up for quite a while for a couple weeks so hopefully they are going to work fine i am going to write real quick let me grab a pen i didn't have steve include these on here because i wanted the swatch chart to be to reflect the ultimate collection um, and not additional colors we can always add Things to our swatch charts. So here is emerald, emerald, and we have sapphire with two P's, S-A-P-P-H-I-R-E, and ruby, R-U-B-Y. See, they know how to put names on colors. They just need to learn on the others. <laughs> <laughs> emerald. Okay, let's see. This one has definitely been tip up. Let's see how it does. Yeah, it's feeling a little dry too. Teak is wondering if it's best to store the twin tips flat. Yeah. You would think so, huh? With yeah. The two ends. All my um, double ended markers, again, whether they're water based or alcohol based, are all stored on their side. All right, I think we've come to the part of the evening where we need to share another um, interesting fact. Can you use Sharpie markers on glass? 
on the glass baking or ceramic dishware. Yes. I remember my mom using it to mark, like, before we'd go to a church activity and she'd bring a casserole dish or something, like, uh, jello or whatever she was bringing, and she'd mark her name on the bottom of it. But she'd always put a piece of scotch tape or um, masking tape and then put her name on it. Could she have just written her name straight onto the glass? Ooh, let's find out. Let's find out. While Sharpie markers are AP certified non-toxic, we do not recommend using them on areas of items that may come in contact with food or the mouth. Sharpie has not been tested as an oven proof product and should not be used anywhere where a consumer could possibly ingest the ink. Sharpie markers are only recommended for use on ceramic or glassware when the product is being used for decorative or display purposes. Okay. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. Okay. I think I've done it on um, glass before and um, put it in the dishwasher and the dishwasher washed it right off. So I don't yeah. think it stays permanent. Katara mentioned that, that they will wash off at some point. Yep. So, speaking of permanent, we know that they claim to be permanent markers, right? So, what makes a marker permanent? We just said we can wash it right off. Mm. I, can, I can put um, Sharpie on my hand and wash it right off. That's not very permanent. But yet it says right on here, permanent so marker, why Steve. Is it permanent, Jen? So what makes a permanent marker permanent? Will you tell us? I will. Do you have this knowledge? I do, actually. <laughs> I have this memorized. You have it memorized? Yeah, something that I've been you, keeping in my head for a long time. You're now. you're so brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I believe is that a marker could be classified as permanent if it <laughs> I can't do that. adheres to most surfaces and or is water resistant, okay. uses dyes or pigments. The dyes or pigments used, which give the ink color, colorants, determine how well a marking will resist fading and the combination of ingredients used in the ink formulation gives the ink permanent properties. So... That's what when a marker can be classified as permanent. So it adheres to most surfaces mm -hmm. and, and is, is water resistant. Water resistant. Right. Not proof. there's two words, water resistant and waterproof, which you learn when you're buying tents. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So it's water resistant but not water resistant waterproof. if it uses dyes or pigments. So that doesn't matter. It can there's be dyes one. or pigments. And in the dyes or pigments that are used, which give the ink color, that reads weird. Yeah. Determine how well a marking will resist fading, and the combination of ingredients used in the ink formulation gives the ink permanent properties. Okay. And that, doesn't, that wasn't doing very well. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So um, now we're moving into the harder swatching zone. Are we ready for the difficult swatching zone? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is where things get complicated because we don't have any names on any of these next set of markers. So I'm going to tuck these metallics in here. We're going to pull out the fine points, which are the fatter ones. Uh, put this neon one back in here. And get out all the beautiful fine points. Look how pretty. Isn't that a beautiful thing? That is really fun to look at. That makes me want to color. Okay, so what we have is <laughs> this mess. Sorry, Lark wrote, the only time they are permanent is when the grandkids color your wood coffee table. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's usually permanent when you don't want it to be permanent, right? <laughs> that's that's the truth. And Karen says they also have Sharpie Extreme Fade Resistant Markers. Okay, so um, that's they have. 
currently, and I think their their frequently asked questions is out of date, to be honest with you. They have fine point, neon color, ultra fine, twin tip. These are all the ones we have. Then they have retractable, mini, chisel tip, which we have, super, super sharpie twin tip, professional, and industrial. And I think the industrial are the ones they sell for like writing on pipe. And I think it's more permanent, even more permanent. So I think that's what, like when you go look on, um, when you buy them from industrial type places, I think that's what that um, industrial one is. So that makes sense, Jennifer. Okay, um, so. Mary Baruso says, love you guys and Rose too. And she donated. Oh, thank you so much. What's her name? Uh, Mary Baruso. Mary, thank you so much. And Polly just donated. She says, thank you for everything. I so appreciate you both. Oh, Polly. Thank you so much, you guys. You're so sweet. Oh, Okay, so I know this one is black. I can I can label black. Black. In a second, I'm gonna have Steve do a smell test again. This is gonna be a, a closed eye one because I have a theory that the different colors smell different. And one of the reasons I have this theory is because of one of the frequently asked question items. Are you guys ready for another tidbit of information? Um, this one is really fascinating. Let's see if I can find it. I hope I put it on here. Mm. Okay, that's this one right here. Steve, will you read this one? And then we're going to have him do a smell test after he reads that interesting factoid. Okay, there are several different styles of Sharpie markers. Is the ink the same in each of the different styles? It says the black ink in the fine, ultra fine, twin tip, chisel, retractable, mini, and super is permanent ink. The principal solvents are alcohols, but they also contain ethylene glycol monobutyl. E monobutyl ether. Okay, eth ethylene glycol <laughs> monobutyl ether. All other Sharpie ink colors are permchrome ink. For these, the principal solvents are also alcohols, but no glycol ethers are used. So they are different. Interesting. So basically all of them are that big long word in alcohol, except for some of the others are perm chroming. So it doesn't say specifically. Okay. So the difference <laughs> is the black ink is different from the colored ink. Oh, so it's specifically the black in those and then all other. Interesting. Okay. So, isn't that interesting? So as a colorist, this is of interest to us um, because different inks will behave differently and will react to different solvents and will behave and do different things and will smell in different ways. This is why I think um, different colors smell differently. <laughs> so, um, the print, they're saying, they're not telling you, but the principal solvents are alcohols, but they also contain these other things. All other Sharper inks are permachrome ink. Um, so, so it's all other colors. Okay. Right. Isn't that interesting? But no glycol ethers are used. Okay. So when you go on to BIC's website and you look at the BIC, um, packaging they make a really big deal about what's in their markers and I think it has something to do with what um, Sharpie is talking about right here I don't know why this is a big deal but I think that there's something going on there that we don't know about anyway so now for Steve's smell test we have the correct markers out here in front of me and I would like to know um, can he smell the difference between a black? We're going to do a green because I have a theory that greens are stinkier. So we're going to throw in a green. Where's a good, this is a good, good plain green. We're going to throw in a red and a blue and let's do a yellow. Okay, so I'm going to have him close his eyes and we're going <laughs> to smell 
these five markers and I want him to see if he can tell if there's one that's stinkier than the other or do they all just smell like a Sharpie marker. Okay. Okay. So he's got it. I'm ready. Shut. We're going to yes. attempt not to color your nose. Okay. So mix that. them all up. Okay. Here's the first one. Do I look good? You look so good. Thanks. Okay. Here's the first one. Okay. Okay. That was number one. Okay. Here's the next one. Okay. Was Ooh, that my... one more smelly or less smelly? Or same? Different. I would say different. Okay, just different. Okay, here's the next one. That one kind of reminds me of the last one. Okay, next one. That one seems less smelly. Okay, next one. Uh, put that with the other two. The different ones? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. You can open your eyes now. <laughs> so we have the least smelly was the black one. Interesting. That's not what I expected. I thought that would be the stinkiest. Okay. And then this one, the blue, was the one you said was the... Okay, do... Uh, and then these were the ones you said were the most interesting. Okay, let me see. The different. I'm going to try green. <laughs> yeah, that one's stronger. I think blue's stronger. Okay. And Let's try different. a different green. Try a different green. That's less. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> we just blew all my, my theories. Okay. Well, except that smell the black was different. Smell a green Copic now. <laughs> You're going to be so high. <laughs> mm, that smells good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you prefer the smell of Copics? Yeah. Interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, back to swatching. <laughs> okay, now I need your help figuring all this out after you get caught up with the chat. <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. Okay, now I need to figure out, oh, well, we know this is black. That's the easiest. And we know this one is brown. So I can label this one brown. And we know this is slate gray. So <laughs> I've got the bottom three figured out the easiest ones. So I'm going to label these three um, slate gray. <laughs> Asking you if I'm high yet. Yes. <laughs> you need to take a few deep breaths now of, of yeah, normal air. Some. Slate gray. Slate gray. Okay. And then this one is brown. We know that. So I'm starting out with the easiest three, which are the last three on the chart. And then I don't want to color them all in solid. We'll be here for ages. So I'm just going to do half like we were doing earlier. Good old Sharpie. Okay, there's black and brown. Alcohol markers are so great for coloring. They lay down such a nice block of color and a slate gray. Alcohol markers are great for base layers. Um, you can color on top of them with um, gel pens, with color pencils. They're so great. Okay. So we got some. Let's look at the reds. We've got this red and we've got this red. And then we go into the oranges. Okay. One of them is racy red and one of them is red. And then we go into optic orange, orange, and leg warmer orange, and tangerine, and peach. Okay, so I think I've got all the 
orangey type colors here. Uh, here's a yellow. All right, Steve. One is racy red and one is red, and it looks from the swatch that racy red is going to be darker than red. So I'm guessing racy red and red? Yeah, that's what I would think too. Okay. I hope I'm right. Because here we go. Racy. R A C E Y R E D. And that's definitely redder than that, so I'm going to call this red. Right? I hope. I don't know. I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> Red. Yes. <clears throat> Racy red. We've committed now. Yeah, it's a darker red. Okay, and this one we're calling red. Yeah, I think that's right. Definitely looks. Is it the same red as what they had in the chisel, though? Or the twin tip? So many questions. This is what we called red in the twin tip. No. It's a different red. Yeah. Well, according to the box, racy red is a darker red than yeah. red is, so I think that's right. Okay. This is very confusing. Is this why they just haven't labeled their colors? Because they have all different colors going on from... <laughs> this is really confusing. Okay. Now, we have... These yeah. two are really close. Yeah, they are. Oh, I think goodness. optic orange is pretty... Uh, evident. That's the darker. This one yeah. here? Okay. Steve has told me to call this one Optic Orange. Yes. <laughs> He's our color boss. <laughs> Optic Orange. Did they give you two of the same? I, I think these might be duplicates. I think those are dupes. Did you just use the word dupes? I did. Because I'm cool. <laughs> just like my wife. <laughs> oh. Just to slide over a little bit. Oh. Alright. Okay, that's optic orange. Into the basket. Okay, so did the does the box say that no. we get two oranges? Thank you, Jerry. She just donated. Oh, she thank says, Here's you. Here's a little happiness. For you. Thank you so much, Jerry. You're so kind. <laughs> okay, so is this one orange then? What do you think, Jerry? I would, I would think that one's orange. Okay. Based, based on the. So we're gonna call this one orange. So do we have two? If you look at this. You got orange, and then the orange and the leg warmer orange are really similar um, on that. Yeah. But then tangerine is lighter, and then you have peach. So, mm. so I, th I would think that... So we're going to call this one orange, right? Because this one's darkest. Yeah, but leg warmer orange looks really similar too, though. Uh-oh. I wrote orange. Yeah. Go for it. Let's it looks see. orange. Let's see. If we swatch, we've got that color we're thinking is orange. And then we've got these two pens which look the same. That one. Yeah, maybe they are dupes. Oh. Two oh. totally different colors. Oh, interesting. But the caps look identical. <sighs> okay. Okay, and then we've got 
this color. Huh. Okay, so tangerine is the lighter for sure. This one? No, that's peach. This one? That one. This is peach. Right. Okay, let's call it peach and get it out of the way. Peach. And then the lighter yellow orange is tangerine. This one is, oh, that's a pretty color. It looks so pretty with racy red. Oh, wow. That is a beautiful peach color. I don't know if I've ever had peach before. Do I have peach? I don't know if I have. I haven't used it enough because that's beautiful. Mystic Sparkle Wings uh, mentioned that when you buy them, open stock they have a barcode sticker that tells you the <gasps> color really <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay so we still have these three yeah that we're... so find the lighter of those two okay okay that one that one's tangerine okay so we're calling this one tangerine yeah and then we just have to figure out the other two yeah tangerine Let's see what tangerine looks like on our swatch page. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, I just want a color now. I love swatching. Makes me so happy. Okay, so we have these two now. Are we sure that's optic orange? Are you happy with that? Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Because if you, and then you we can have put them all three together. Side by that side, color, and we have this color now. And then do the optic orange again. I now. threw it in the in the bucket. Because that is making me question that now. Oh no. That's dark. That's optic orange. According to this. Okay. Yeah. I would so say that's optic orange. I would say that's optic orange. You should like switch the caps. I can just write optic in front. So yeah, we but think I'm saying you should switch switch the caps because that's darker. I know that's just really wrong. Yeah, I'd switch them. But the body is. Oh, that's right. So this one we're gonna call optic orange now. Yeah. Okay. I think that's what some of them were talking about, where the caps don't match the color yeah. of the ink. Yeah, optic orange, and well. the same as it's drying it's a little bit different no oh, you're right okay so we're gonna take and draw a line and X this out okay so this is the new optic orange and now this one is what then that would be either orange or leg warmer orange and on the you know if you look on here they look the same color so, so I, I think to... orange might be a little darker than leg warmer orange I mean that's the trend that it's going on the yeah. scale. yeah so, so let's make would... the lighter one leg a warmer orange yeah okay so this is leg warmer orange and this is now just orange right so we're gonna cross out optic like that <laughs> Oh my goodness. I hope they're not all this difficult. This one is orange. And this one is lake warmer orange. Okay. Woohoo! Yeah. I'll try that. I like it. Lake. Did you ever wear lake warmers, Steve? Uh, no. Well, why not? <laughs> <laughs> They've been talking about 
leg warmers. Uh-huh. Oh, I wore leg warmers. <laughs> <laughs> they were cool. Okay, now into yellows, which I have two. Yellow and, oh, then there's another one. Yellow, banana clip yellow, and supersonic yellow. Supersonic is like a green. A ah. Yellow green. <clears throat> okay. But from what we just learned, you better swatch those yeah. first. Yeah. Okay, so we've got this one. It definitely looks like, you know, that's going to be more of a yellow orange. And then this one. And then banana clip yellow should lean towards the yellow green. And then that one's definitely supersonic. Okay, so like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that one was easier. <laughs> Phew. Okay, let's let's read a, a factoid. You're saying wait till you get to the pinks. <laughs> oh no. Yellow. And then this one is banana clip yellow. I love that name. I still have banana clips for my hair. Did you know that's what that is, Steve? Oh yeah. Banana. My sister's having those. Uh huh. Clip yellow. You can still buy them there. I saw some um, at Walmart the other day. Supersonic yellow. Supersonic yellow. Super sonic yellow. Okay. So the next question. Is how long do you think this marker will last? Like how much ink is in this marker? I don't know. Now Let's we've find done out. a test. Remember? <clears throat> we did a test. That's right. So we could refer back to my tests. Supersonic yellow. So why don't we read the the official answer? Okay, here is the official answer to how long does a permanent marker last? We do not have a mathematical formula to figure out how long a permanent marker will last. With outdoor exposure on a non-porous surface, the marks from a dye base marker will be gone in perhaps three to four months. Oh, so this isn't talking about how much ink is in a marker. We're talking about light fastness. This is a light fastness answer. Oh, you're right. I thought they were talking about how much ink. This You're is right. a light fastness. With indoor exposure on a porous surface, like artist canvas or paper, we would expect markers from a dye base marker to last several years. Okay, now wait, what was the answer about it being outside? So outdoor exposure on a non-porous surface. So like... Um, they'll be gone in like three to four months. That would be like um, on vinyl or something yeah. that is has no pores. Yeah, <laughs> Tika was saying that she had colored on some rocks and it again oh, disappeared quickly on rocks yeah, yeah. so several years if it's indoor on a porous surface okay resins or surfactants give the ink the ability to adhere to various surfaces thus we have markers for non-porous and glossy surfaces markers for oily or wet surfaces and markers that can withstand extreme heat they have markers for wet surfaces interesting <laughs> and markers that can withstand extreme heat. Whoa. That's interesting. Okay, I've pulled out the greens. Tika what? says on the rocks, even with a clear sealant spray, it only lasted a few days. Whoa. Even with the sealant. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so I'm <clears throat> guessing this one is lime. Yep, lime. Let's swatch it, though. We learned our lesson. Oh. Is that lime still? No, no, grab the green. The... Cause that's the one that you're doing now, I was guessing would be green. What do you think, Rose? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hello, Rose. Your hair is beautiful. Did I, you fix it? I love it. You're you're stunning. <laughs> okay, now we're getting into some blue greenish world here. Okay, there's our greens. There are the greens. And Did I say got... there is the green? Oh dear. Okay, lime. Move that over so they can see too. Oh yeah, they might like to see. So right here is where the greens start and. 
Yeah, that's the closest thing we have to green. Sorry, I can't yeah. just stick my head up here. Lime. So lime and green, I think we're pretty confident. Are Both you here. sure? What? I'm confused already. Well, lime and like, that's lime, that's green. But what about that one? That's where you get it to like either argyle green or jet set jade. Oh, I see. Yeah, the green is really dark. Okay, so this is lime and this is green. Right. Okay. Lime. And this one's green. Okay. Can we just have names on our markers, Sharpie, please? <laughs> okay. We should have like a running count of how many times Jennifer complains about not having names on her markers. A lie. I like that supersonic yellow. That's yeah. Cool. And then green. Okay, Steve, which one do we think is Argyle? So let's go to mint, because mint is the lightest of all the greens that you pulled out. Okay. And we know for sure that that one's mint. So this one here. Yeah. Okay, mint. Yeah, we'll do the ones we know. Oh, that was a big sigh, little lady. She says, aren't you done with these stinky markers yet? <laughs> mint right here. Such a pretty color. Ooh, that mint and that yellow and that peach, those three together would be so pretty. That would be a beautiful um, trio, these three. Oh, I don't know what color scheme that is, but it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Okay, now we got three left and one of them is argyle green which is more of a yellow it leans closer to the yellow okay let's re-swatch we got that one and so i'm pretty sure that's argyle yeah and then you have jet said that's kind of in the middle and then you'll have aqua that leans more towards blue so whichever one is most blue is aqua i think that one's more blue yeah i would agree and so that one's jet set jade so this one's the argyle yeah that's argyle green okay Ar Argyle green. Okay. Pretty. So pretty. And then this one we're going to call Jet Set Jade. Yes. Okay. Jet. Set Jade. So pretty. And then Aqua. Right. And then we move into the blues. Steve's favorite color. You're even wearing blue today. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, aqua. Ooh, my little thing is getting very full of done ones. Okay, let's bring the blues up. Uh, oh, I'm getting some bonus licks. Thank you. Oh, thank you. According to this, there should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine blues. <laughs> they really like their yep, blues. That's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Very good. Okay, you want to sit down? Will you sit down? You don't want to? You want mm -hmm. to get down. She's probably tired of the smell. Yeah, I don't blame you. I'm getting tired of it. So why don't we let you get down? Oh, you sweet girl. You're such a sweet girl. Say, see you later. I don't like stinky markers. 
<laughs> Woo. Okay. Next one. Let's let's see. I'm gonna guess. It goes like. Um, so we have a sky, uh, an ice blue, and a sky blue. Now sky blue should be the lightest. According to the caps, that's how I would do it. Oh yeah. Let's see if I'm right. Yeah. Let's see. This would be my first blue. That's a bluish green. Yeah, might be turquoise. Okay. Mm. Then I would go here. Oh, wow. This is going to be hard. Oh, boy. Oh, that's like a periwinkle. Uh, is there any that we can say we know for sure? Well, I would say navy. <laughs> <laughs> that one? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's name that one. What's this one? Navy. Okay. We'll do the one we know. Navy. In the navy. Okay, one down, eight to go. Which oh, one, boy. is this one blue? Well, let's see, there is a techno blue that's right next to purple. So I would say whichever one has the most red in it and is dark. Oh dear. Is, so that would probably be that one, don't you think? Yeah, that one's more purpley. Yeah. So we'll call this one techno blue. Yeah. The problem is, is if you look at the blue down here from the chisels, do we not, are we not going to do that? Well, definitely has more violet in it than any others, and it's right next to the purple, so. Does anyone have any advice? Techno blue is third from the right. If we had the other one here, that one. They're thinking it's that one. Yeah, I don't know though. Yeah, because according to this one, it's got more of a purpley undertones if you look at the box. You see the purple here, and then techno blue, and then over here, navy and blue. So that's why Steve's wondering if we pick a blue that has more of a, I don't know. That one is blue, yep, that one. So what are they suggesting we do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I I think you go with techno blue with that one because, like I said, it has the most red in it, and it's going towards it's dark, okay. and it goes it's next to the purple, so it's definitely the only one that fits. Like what other one <laughs> would you pick? There yeah, isn't any other one that even would come close to that description. Yeah. Okay, so let's go techno blue for this one. <laughs> Okay, even though it looks closer to the chisel blue, but they've the red on the chisel looked more like the um, other red, the racy red. So I don't think that's a good indicator anyway. So I think, yeah, we'll go with techno blue here. Okay, here we go, techno blue. I think I'm going to send a link of this video to Sharpie <laughs> so they can see how much I'm struggling. <laughs> okay, techno blue. And then we're going to call this one blue. Well, let's look at the other ones now. So we called this one navy. Because the other ones We are called really... this one techno blue. Okay, so... So we have... Oh, man. This is hard. We have... So let's. Oh, I don't think I swatched Techno Blue, did I? I don't know. Where is it? Right I, there. Like the lightest color on the box is sky blue. Okay. But 
Like you said, it looks periwinkle on there. Do we have a periwinkle? <laughs> we have a lilac. But we have all kinds of purples over here to pick from, so this is really confusing. Yeah. So as far as the way that these go, I mean, you have like this ice blue where the turquoise is, according to this, looks more green than the ice blue does, or blue ice, I mean. So it makes me wonder if that one on the end is turquoise. I'm so confused. Okay. Are there any others that we can just say this is what no, they do? No. There really aren't. Like, Brilliant blue and surf are hmm. so similar. Yeah. And nano. This like, is the problem with swatches, uh, like pre-printed swatches. They don't, yeah. they are not helpful. We printed off the pre-printed swatches for my Blick Studio markers, and they were totally off. Like the the color antique was the same way. It it printed almost white on um, the printout, but it was green, and it's just so, not possible to get these accurate. So this one I think is blue. And the main reason why is because, again, if you look at, if you start to go this way, there's more yellow in these. Okay. Right? And so I'm wondering if that one is a blue. But it, it certainly doesn't match, you know, the blue on the chisel, but. But we're not going to try to match that. Tried, yeah. So I, I think we just start naming them. Yeah. I don't think there's any. There is a wrong and a right, but we can't get it because we don't have the right. The only way to do it would be go to go to a store, it sounds like, where there are actual barcode numbers and get the names there. That's the only way. Um, and that's ridiculous to me. This is actually angering me at this point that I can't <laughs> get it um, through their website, through their swatches, through my best efforts. I can't do it. And that's upsetting. So, <laughs> um, it really brings out my art OCD. <laughs> I want it to be right, and I can't get it right. So, um, I have two options. I can do a temporary naming and take them to the store and try to get the right names. That's one option that I can do. Um, or I can just give them a name and let it go. Will I be able to let it go? <laughs> He's looking at me like, I don't think we can let this go. Yeah. I don't think I can let it go. It's officially 8 o'clock. I'm frustrated. I want to go to the store and find out what they really are. Yeah, we can do that. And I'm frustrated. And I don't like being left frustrated. I want res resolution. <laughs> and I'm afraid that when we move into these... I'm going to have exactly the same experience. Yeah. So I have officially come to a place where I cannot move on because I'm frustrated. So I think that's the best thing to do. I need to, and I'm feeling a total relaxing now that I, I have a plan. And the plan is to go to a store where they're being sold open stock, where the name and the barcode will be right there. I can take my phone and take photos. I think that's the best way because I can't walk in with these. But Unless then, maybe if I go to the front desk w with them in a Ziploc bag and say, I'm a YouTuber. I will give you credit for your store for helping me. If you will let me walk to your open stock display and I have blank number of markers in this Ziploc bag, I will buy something from your store and credit your store if you will let me figure out the actual names of these stupid markers. <laughs> that I love. Sharpie, if you're watching this, I adore your markers. I bought your Ultimate Collection. I will rebuy every single marker you have if you will come out with all of them with their names beautifully printed on the bodies. That is how much I adore your markers. And this is driving me absolutely crazy because I cannot get the right names on them. 
So I think that's my plan. And I think it will help all of us if I can resolve this for all of us. So that's my plan. There will be a follow up Sharpie video. I don't think I can film live in the store. Um, that's usually problematic. <laughs> some stores will and will some won't let me but I will try. I'll see what I can do. Um, but I'm going to make this happen. We are going to get the right names on these because it's going to upset me if I'm always going to be guessing and I want them right. So we're going to do this. We're going to get it right, you guys. <laughs> and it's going to be awesome. So I'm excited about that. So that's what we're going to do. We've got the ultimate collection and they're going to have the ultimately correct names on the ultimate collection. That's the plan. So I hope you had fun with me um, going through this. I hope you didn't get upset and frustrated with me. I, I, I am guessing that you guys have the same feelings about Sharpies as I do. You love them. They have their place in your art stash. You like to play with them. Um, you don't enjoy their smell, but you get over it because they are so much fun to color with. Um, but you have the same issues that I do. You don't like that they don't have names on them. You wish they had more colors. All these things that we love about Sharpies. So um, we're going to resolve this and, and be happy with them and and yeah I'm really liking this ultimate collection I love the box I kind of wish the box was a little bit bigger so I could sort them out a little bit more I like having all the right markers in all the right spots and all those things but you know I think I'm gonna want a box that's clear so that I can store them all correctly tips down all those good things that I like to do with my markers. So I'm probably going to end up purchasing a clear box anyway, so I can store them correctly, store them beautifully so I can see the beautiful colors and be inspired by them. That's kind of the theme of my entire art studio anyway, is to have all my colors out in front of me where I can see them, be inspired by them, and, and want to color with them. So maybe when I go to the store to search out the correct name of this particular marker, I'll look for a clear package that I can store and display them and I'll let you know what I find when I'm there. So is there any last minute questions or thoughts? Nope, they agree. That'll be great. Okay, good. <laughs> We're all on the same art OCD path here. <laughs> We're going to get them right. So I've got the ones here. I'll probably go ahead and um, off camera kind of match up the ultra fine ones with the fine point ones and see if there's any mystery ones. I know we have a couple that aren't exactly the same colors, like we have the um, the almond. I don't know if I've ever owned an almond colored Sharpie. Now I do have the elusive almond Sharpie here in the ultra fine point. So there's a few like that that I have in the ultra fine point that we don't have in the fine point. So before traipsing off to the store, I'm going to make sure that there aren't any in the ultra fine point that I need to track down names for as well. So I'll do that and then I'll be all organized and ready to go to the store and figure this out. Katara suggests <laughs> a lipstick storage tray. Oh, that's a really good idea. Yeah. Beverly says, thank you, Jen, for this event. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you to everyone who donated to our channel and during this event. That always really helps out our channel. Another great way to help out our channel, of course, as always, is to hit that thumbs up, share out the video, comment, subscribe, all those great things that all of us YouTubers are always asking you to do. That always helps us as well. So Thank you everyone for all the different ways that you support us here at Coloring Bliss. And I'm looking forward to doing more with you for Alcohol Marker August. We're going to be doing some fun coloring and um, we've got the Ohu brush tips I want to do some more coloring with. I've got some really fun um, art ideas that we're going to be doing with markers this month. So make sure you have hit that little bell notification as well so that you can join us for all the fun videos that we're going to be doing. So thank you so much for all the fun. Thank you, Steve, for being the smell guinea pig. <laughs> you're welcome i know you don't hate doing it but i know it's not your favorite thing to do so thank you for doing that for all of us because that's a, a chore so <laughs> and i hope all of you have a wonderful colorful blissful day bye bye everyone